What's up guys, PK here, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about June crafting. What is it? What is it good for? And how the frick do I get it to 200? Now, first things first. In patch 1.1, they significantly increased the XP requirements for most of the crafting professions. However, they also increased the amount of XP you obtain from crafting higher tiers of items in pretty much every profession, except for jewel crafting. Jewel crafting only got an increase to the XP requirements, but it didn't get any of the buffs to the XP obtained. Now, this is most likely going to change in an upcoming patch, which is why I'm going to be talking about this whole thing in sort of two different universes. The now universe, which is the way it works right now, and the most likely coming universe, which is how I would assume that they're going to implement it in the upcoming patch. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but it seems to make a lot of sense to me that they're gonna put jewel crafting in line with many of the other professions in that you're simply going to get more XP for crafting higher tiers of jewelry so that for the first 50 levels, you'd be crafting flawed jewelry. For the next 50 levels up to 100, you'd be crafting regular jewelry. From 100 to 150, you'd be crafting brilliant jewelry. And from 150 to 200, you'd be crafting pristine jewelry. That is not the case currently. So for those of you that want the short version, all you need to do right now to get 200 jewel crafting is to craft 70 flawed amulets, and then you need to craft 5,525 regular pieces of jewelry, whether it's rings or amulets, doesn't really matter. There you go, easy. My job here is done. The end. No, on a serious note though, <laughs> that would be the most effective way to do it right now. However, for most of you guys, it is not the way I would recommend. Let me explain. In order for the most cost-effective way to get 200 jewel crafting to really be worth it, in my opinion, you need to already be at a bare minimum 150 in stone cutting and 200 in smelting. This is because you need to be 150 in stone cutting to cut the gems you need for the highest tiers of jewelry, and you need to be 200 in smelting in order to smelt Asmodium, which is the material you need, again, to craft the highest tiers of jewelry. For that reason, I think it is completely logical and sensible to not focus all of your efforts on jewel crafting until you have reached these other thresholds. In fact, I'd say preferably you want to be 200 in both stone cutting and in smelting before you really go for the most cost-effective way to increase your jewel crafting. And instead, you should focus on the most cost-effective way to sort of do all of them at once, if that makes sense, until you get to 200 stone cutting and smelting, and then you can go for the most cost-effective way of leveling your jewel crafting, which is, again, simply by crafting regular jewelry pretty much all the way from 50 to 200. But assuming you're one of those people that are not 200 in both smelting and stone cutting, I would recommend that you still combine gems into higher tiers and actually still bother to smelt silver into gold, gold into platinum, which is something you don't want to do if you focus solely on the jewel crafting XP. Jewel crafting can be very, very confusing and sort of tricky in the beginning. Let me explain why. Now, as you're trying to increase all of these different professions all at once, you're going to need a specific tier of moats in order to combine your gems into a specific tier. And then you're gonna need, again, the right tier of moat in order to cut those stones into actual usable stones that you can then turn into jewelry. So 
what this essentially means is that it can get very, very confusing if you accidentally combine your modes too high or too early, then suddenly you don't have the right tier you need to either combine or cut the gems. For that reason, I have sort of devised a little plan here for you guys. So what you do is, if you're below 50, you start at the stone cutting table, assuming you've already obtained all of your flawed gems and your moats. And then you cut all your flawed gems, and then you go over to the smelter, smelt all your silver, then you move all the way down to the outfitting station, and then you take all of your silver, and then you craft an equivalent amount of silver settings and silver necklaces, okay? All of these you can then combine with all of your cut flawed gems, and craft all your jewelry. Now again, you need to craft exactly 70 of these flawed necklaces in order to get to 50. Once you get to 50, now we wanna craft the regular ones. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit more tricky if you don't take the time to do it in the correct order, okay? So let's say that you've been out farming, you've been into a dungeon, you have a bunch of gems of different tiers, keep that in mind. Now you have a bunch of different tiers of gems in your inventory, you have a bunch of moats, right? So what do you do? Okay, well, the first thing you do is you equip all of your stone cutting accumulation gear. Then you move over to the Arcana station and combine all of your moats into wisps. Then you move all the way over to the stone cutting table and then you combine all of your tier two gems into tier three gems. Now, assuming you're below 100 in jewel crafting, you simply cut all of your tier three gems and then you proceed over to the smelter, smelt all of your silver, possibly combine your silver into gold and into platinum if you still need that uh, smelting XP. If you're already 200 smelting, you want to skip that. If you're already 200 smelting, then you don't want to be crafting gold and platinum out of your silver. Now, you do get more XP from crafting platinum settings or gold settings than you do from crafting silver settings, but if you do the math, you're still eventually going to get more XP simply from spending the silver in combination with your gems. So if you're already 200 smelting, you're simply going to smelt all of your silver ore into silver, and you're now ready to move over to the outfitting station and craft all of your cut gems into jewelry. Now, when you get to the outfitting station, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your silver and you're going to craft a 50-50 silver settings and silver hooks, chains, and bands. Now, this depends on which type of jewelry you want to craft. Now, it's important to keep in mind that bands can only be used for regular and up, and hooks can only be used for brilliant and up. So most of the time, the safest choice, if you're just going for XP, is to craft trinket chains that you can combine into amulets, okay? And it's important to keep in mind that the silver setting requires less silver per piece than the chain. Okay, so the secondary one is always going to need more silver than the first one. So make sure you balance it out so that you end up with a 50-50 distribution so that you can craft as many pieces of jewelry as possible. Now, let's say that you were already above 100. Okay, you're already above 100. Well, then once you had combined all of your moats into wisps, then you moved over to the stone cutting table, you combined your tier 2 gems to tier 3 gems. You would now move back to the Akana station combine all of your wisps into essences, move back to the stone cutting table, combine all of your tier three gems into tier four gems, and then proceed to cut the tier four gems. If you were above 150, you would then go back to the arcana station, combine all of your essences into quintessences, move all the way back to the stone cutting, and then start combining all of your tier four gems into tier five gems, brilliant to pristine, and then proceed to cut the pristine gems. But crucially, especially with the last step, is only worth it for the stone cutting XP. Okay, gold to XP, it's not worth it. Gold to XP, you want to stick at regular gems. Keep that in mind. So I would only do this because it's really good stone cutting XP. So do it. Potentially, what you can then do is instead of actually crafting jewelry with the pristine gems, in particularly the good ones, the expensive ones, sell them instead and use them to purchase lower tiers of gems. That way you get both the XP and you get a bunch of new gems back into your, your crafting, and that way you can hopefully be more effective. Now, the way to read this table is that in order to fuse a tier two gem to a tier three gem, you need three tier two gems, and you need a single wisp, equivalent to five moats. 
Now, in order to combine a tier 3 to a tier 4, you need 4 tier 3 gems. That's going to cost you 1 essence, which is equivalent to 4 wisps or 20 motes. In order to combine tier 4 to tier 5, you need 5 tier 4 gems, 1 quintessence, equivalent to 3 essence, equivalent to 12 wisp, equivalent to 60 motes. Now, at this point, it's pretty common knowledge that uh, in order to make a single quintessence, you need, roughly speaking, 60 motes. But this is, of course, not entirely true. Now, the reason this is not entirely true is because, assuming you're 200 in Arcana, well, then you're gonna get a 20% chance to proc an extra every time you do another combination from one tier to the next. What this essentially means is that in practice, if you're already at 200 in Arcana, well, then in order to craft one Quintessence, instead of needing three Essence, well, you only need two and a half. Because what's 20% of two and a half? Well, that's 0 0.5. 0 0.5 plus 2.5, that's three. That's the three Essence you need to craft one Quintessence. In other words, for every two and a half Essence, you would be able to craft one Quintessence, statistically. Well, if you only need 2.5 Essence, well, then in theory, you would only need 10 wisps to craft one, you know, to craft two and a half essence, right? But because you also get 20% there, well, that's 8.35 you would need in order to actually get two and a half essence in order to get one quintessence. Which means that in reality, you would only, statistically speaking, you would only need 35 motes in order to get 8.35 wisps, in order to get 2.5 essences, in order to get one quintessence. So just something to keep in mind. Since this is really important, when you're looking at prices, what is worth purchasing? Is it better to purchase motes, wisps, essences, or quintessences? And this will obviously vary from server to server, from time to time. Now, let's say you've exhausted your supply of gems, and now you need to do buy orders. What do you do? Now, as you can see here, not every type of moat is represented equally in terms of the amount of different gems that you can cut or combine with that moat type. If you look at air, it can combine both jasper and topaz. However, air moats are one of the most expensive ones because it has several different uses and it's also particularly hard to farm. For that reason, you want to avoid air moats as much as possible since they're simply more valuable. Then we have death modes. Now, death modes used to be fairly cheap. They're easier to farm than air modes, but they have increased significantly in value ever since the update that made it easier to craft dungeon keys. Then you have earth modes. Now, earth modes is one of the things you're going to be focusing on a lot. The reason being that emeralds and ambers are two of the cheapest gems, and earth modes are one of the cheapest modes. Then you have fire modes. Now, I feel like this one fluctuates a lot. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's terrible. It varies. Then you have life modes. Now, life modes are usually really, really cheap, but they also come with a catch in this example because life modes are used to cut diamonds and onyxes. Now, these two gems happen to be two of the most expensive gems in the game, which means life modes are actually not the best or actually getting 200 in jewel crafting, because that will require you to cut the most expensive gems. Now, one of the reasons these gems are very expensive is exactly because they use life modes. In fact, uncut onyxes are often a lot more expensive than the cut ones, because life modes are so cheap that people would prefer getting the uncut version and actually get the XP and the proc chance of actually cutting it. Now, this is not the case with most gems, but it is the case in particular with onyxes and with diamonds. For that reason, you're not going to be using life modes as much as you're going to be using earth modes, for example. But to the extent that you have life modes and onyxes lying around, all power to you. Then we have soul modes. Soul modes can cause amethysts and malachites and opals. Okay, This is the only mode type that has three gems it can cut. For that reason, soul motes is something you're going to be buying in the thousands, okay, in the thousands. And the same goes for both opals, malachites, and amethyst, whichever is cheapest at any given time on your server. Then we have water motes. Now, water motes only have a single gem associated, and that's aquamarine. However, it's a fairly cheap one, and water motes are also very, very cheap. For that reason, they're actually decent, I've found. Um, of course, it's only a single gem type that you can use, but they're also fairly cheap. 
And in this table you can see the cutting costs of two modes to cut a tier 2, two wisps to cut a tier 3, two essence to cut a tier 4, again equivalent to eight wisps or 40 modes, and three quintessences in order to cut a single tier 5 gem. Now, regardless of your starting point, the first thing you need to do, if you haven't done this already, is go into the auction house, click on perks, find the one called stone cutting accumulation, and purchase as many pieces of the gear set as you feel comfortable with. Now, at least two to three of the pieces are fairly cheap. As you can see, the gloves and the boots, relatively inexpensive. The headpiece is a little bit more and the pants and the shirt is a little bit expensive. However, however, there's another reason why this is absolutely vital, okay? And why it's absolutely worth it purchasing the entire set. Because it has no elbows. I know that that, that don't ask me why. Like if you do. <laughs> I have no elbows. I, I don't know why. Anyways, if that's not reason enough to purchase this set, I don't know what is, okay? But in any case, once you have acquired the full set of stone cutting accumulation gear, the next thing you want to do is put in a bunch of bio orders. Now, depending on your sort of time horizon for leveling jewel crafting, but I've said this many times before, I know there are a lot of people that are very reluctant to use purchases to level their crafting skills. But I, I'm telling you, this is a mistake. In particular, with a behemoth task such as jewel crafting. Because the amount of time you would have to spend farming the materials could be spent earning an equivalent amount of gold in less time, right? So you, can, you could either go and spend an hour to farm X amount of moats, let's just say a thousand, right? Or you could go and spend an hour uh, farming 2,000 gold and then buy 2,000 modes. Just to give one example, right? Those numbers were arbitrary, but you get the idea. Now, once you have your stone cutting accumulation gear, you need to start putting in buy orders that you're then gonna leave whilst you go off and farm other stuff. This is absolutely crucial. And it's okay if you get if you get overcut on a buy order, simply remove the buy order, put it in again, or leave it, depending on, on the circumstances. It's also important that you, first of all, have a decent spread, by which I mean you should not focus all of your efforts only on earth modes. Okay? That, that's not the way to go. You want to check the market, uh, check earth modes, check water modes, check soul modes, check fire modes. Uh, look around, see, okay, what's cheapest? And usually what should determine the gems you're going for is the modes, because the modes are often the expensive bit. Um, and so what you're going to do is, for example, go in here, you search for earth mode. Boom. Put in a buy order. I would keep the buy orders roughly to 500 to 1000. And of course, also make sure you check the, the difference between the buy orders and the sell orders. Sometimes the buy orders will actually be higher up than the sell orders. And other times, if the discrepancy is really big, right? For example, it's not uncommon in the middle of the night that the buy orders here go all the way down to 0 0.3. That's a great time to put in a large buy order, right? But again, in order to prevent sort of getting overcut all the time and nothing happening, right? You want to spread it out. So I'd probably do a 500 earth mode purchase here, place that order. Then I'd go and search for the equivalent gems that use earth modes. So I might search for emeralds here, for example, tier three emeralds. That's one of the things you're going to be crafting a lot and keep the ratios in mind here, right? So let's say that I put in a uh, thousand earth modes just to make it an easy number, right? A thousand earth modes. You're gonna have to take those 1000 earth modes and turn them into wisps. And you need two wisps to cut a single gem, right? And that means if we if we eliminate the 20% from Akana, the, the, the proc chance, then technically speaking, you need 10 modes to cut a single emerald, right? Uh, which means you need to do a 1 to 10 ratio between amounts of emeralds you purchase versus earth modes. It's going to be a little bit less. It's going to be more like 1 to 8 if you're 200 Akana. But then I put in large amounts of bio orders, right? But before putting in bio orders, and you can see here, there's a huge discrepancy here, right? This means it's actually would be a great time. Like I'm considering actually doing a bio order here, not because I need to, simply for the purposes of selling them again, because... 1.1, 4.75. That's a huge discrepancy. 
That means if someone is too lazy to check the actual price, which is not uncommon. Anyway, so I'll put in a decent 300 there. I can sell those later. So having done earth modes, I would also go and check amber gems. Now, as you can see, amber gems here happen to be significantly cheaper than the equivalent emeralds. For some reason, there were very few emeralds around. Probably more people are just thinking, oh, earth modes, emeralds, that's an easy, you know, association to make. And so for that reason, it seems embers are significantly cheaper right now. Right? So if I was doing jewel crafting and leveling it up right now, I would probably put it in like a decent buy over here for like 500, maybe even um, amber gems. And I might even also purchase like the, the, the cheapest listings, right? The one for one a single gold here, I'd probably purchase those, put in a buy order. Um, and then I'd go check the next one, right? And it's a good idea to just check the market before you start putting in the buy orders. It is a good idea to first check all of the different modes because again, depending on your server, depending on the time of day, depending on the market, it's not unusual that one of the given modes or one of the given gems is gonna be significantly cheaper simply due to random market fluctuations, right? There's gonna be at least one or two of them that just happen to be cheaper right at this time, right now. Right, for whatever reason and so it's a good idea to just you know check out the market right check out the market especially all of the lesser used modes i believe i need death modes personally as well although that's another one that you don't want to focus on for the purposes of jewel crafting because again usually it's significantly more expensive a lot of this actually no you see if i if i hadn't checked there right uh, that's how close i was to actually putting in buy orders so 0.58 not realizing that there's a bunch of listings here for less than 0 0.58. So learn from that mistake that I almost but didn't make. It's extremely important to, you know, check the numbers, right? Check the numbers, buy all the cheapest stuff, and then you can still put in a buy order. And you don't necessarily have, like you don't need to be the person with the cheapest buy order. It's important to look at the quantity as well, right? So if this was a, a buy order for, let's say 100 death modes, right? then I would most likely just ignore it and instead put one up for 0 0.53, right? Uh, whereas since it's a buy order for 1,646, then uh, I would probably <laughs> I would probably want to, to actually overcut him because otherwise it's going to be a long ass time until I actually get any moats. Now, of course, there are different approaches. Some people like to put in long-term buy orders, you know, 7 days, 14 days, and actually just, you know, slowly let them accumulate as... as as the market fluctuates up and down, which it will. Like on a, there's a day night cycle to items. In the nighttime, there's usually uh, less items because more stuff gets bought up, people craft, less stuff is actually farmed and put into the market. So usually prices will slowly increase during the night and, and decrease in peak hours. And that, that's also a gold tip for you guys there. Like I, I made a shit ton of gold simply by buying Asmodium in the middle of the day at peak times and just selling it in the middle of the night. So uh, that's a little bit of a tip for you there. But for that reason, you can do these long-term buy orders. But personally, that's just me personally, I almost never list anything for more than a day. Once in a while, I'll put something in for three days, but pretty much exclusively, I'll do one day buy orders and I'll simply relist them. I'll update them frequently. I'll go in and check. And that's another good idea to do, right? So you might be doing a dungeon. So you put in a bunch of buy orders, you'll go to your dungeon, do some questing, you'll come back, you'll go in and you'll recheck your buy orders. Okay, did someone overcut me? And if they did, subtract your buy order and go in and overcut them. At least that's one way to do it. Of course, you want to you wanna keep an eye on the prices. Sometimes, again, some of the prices will skyrocket on a specific mode, making it unviable. So that's why you want to be flexible with these things. You want to be very flexible. So you want to always check sort of the ratio between, okay, the mode combined with the gem that it can cut or the gems that it can cut. Sort of the cheapest combo pack there is what you want to go for at any given time. And you might as well go in there and, and do 500 modes uh, 500 gems of like at least four or five different variants right now if you're serious about leveling your jewel crafting that's what it's going to take um, and it's not going to be enough to just do that once you're going to have to do that for at least a few days where you just constantly resupply those buy orders you craft all the jewelry and then it's the same for silver you want to absolutely have buy orders for both silver ore and silver ingots but of course before you purchase either 
if we again want to do the math real quick okay let's see here silver ore is 0 0.06 let's see what silver ingots go for and again it varies sometimes ore is better sometimes ingots is better uh 0 0.19 and we know we need four ore for a single ingot right so that's 6 12 18 24 so that's 0 0.24 for a single ingot but not entirely right because there's also the extra 20 percent proc chance right so you'd essentially take the 0 0.24 then you take 20 percent of that that's uh 4.8 from 24 so that that's a 19.2 right so essentially the ore would cost me 19 point, uh, 0.192 gold per ingot whereas the silver ingot here would be 0 0.19 now, these are minimal differences that don't really matter that much, like potato, potato, right? But there, there'll, again, be times of day where one of them is like as much as three times cheaper or more expensive than the other one, where it's just clearly, you know, worth more to go for either. So have buy orders for both because you are going to need a metric fuck ton of silver, like a metric fuck ton of silver. If you think about it, you're going to need uh, for each piece of jewelry you craft you need exactly 10 pieces of silver you need four for the setting then you need five for the chain or the band or whatever and then you need a final piece as the third material so that's 10 silver pieces per piece of jewelry so if you consider the fact that from the 50 to 200 you have to craft 5525 pieces of jewelry some easy math right there will tell you that you're going to need 55,000 silver ingots in order to do that that's a lot of gold, right? But at one-fifth uh, a gold per piece, it's not that bad. It could be worse, right? It could be worse. Like 10, 11,000 gold uh, of just pure silver. So again, you want to have buy orders. Farm as much of it as you can, but you have to supply all of it with buy orders. Anyways, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like a comment and a subscribe for more New World in-depth content. Again, as I said, we got a part two jewel crafting video coming up where we're going to talk about all of the high tier perks, which ones to use, where to farm in, uh, how to make the most profit, how to minimize your risk, whether or not you should craft attribute specific gear or if you should go for the perks. Just a bunch of different things to help ease you guys into the whole thing. I'm also considering doing an updated version of the armoring guide, equivalent to the part 2 of this jewel crafting guide, where we just go through the post 1.1 XP numbers. And then again, also go into a bit more detail, talking about all of the different crafting perks, what you should go for. Uh, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Because it's, it's actually quite complicated. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to hang out, hop in on the Discord server. Link down in the description below. Become YouTube member today. And as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out.